Hi everyone! Excuse my energy, I have just started a new job and it was only a three hour shift today but like my body was not ready <laughs> but I have put off this video for so freaking long. <laughs> Wrap ups are probably my least favourite videos to film because I want to be coherent and like give reviews as well as synopsis and stuff but I don't want the video to be too long and it, it they're just hard like I enjoy obviously I enjoy them I would make them if I didn't but I just they can be tough and I had a very good reading month in February the booktube games absolutely put my ass in gear but that's why I put off this wrap up even more because I have 18 books to talk about. I'm just like, I don't know how I read that many books. I put eight on my TBR and was like, I'll be happy if I get to those. I only got to seven of those books. Um, I didn't get to Everland um, by Wendy Spinelli. I am currently reading that. Um, it's like the 6th of February and I've read maybe 10 pages. Not February, what is this? March? I don't even know. It's like the 6th of March and I've barely read like 10 pages because the booktube games just killed me. <laughs> so it's fine. Taking a bit of a step back from reading and stuff anyway. I'm also just going to take this second here to say that I don't think I'm going to do a TBR for March. Um, as I said, I've just started a new job and having been out of employment for like two and a half years, I just want to like take care of myself and you know I have some books in mind that I'm like oh I want to get to but I'm just I'm not going to go through the process of making a video and stuff because I don't think I'm going to read a lot this month anyway and it's taken me long enough to film this video <laughs> so March might be a little bit quieter which you know I've been pretty quiet on booktube for a while, like not quiet, but you know, I haven't been living up to the, the the standard that I want to be, but it's fine, we're going with it. And with that said, we're gonna talk about the books I read in February. So as I said, I made it through seven out of eight TBR books, which I'm very pleased about, and then I read a further 11. I'm I'm so shocked. So my first read of February was on my Kindle and it was Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nagan. Obviously I was team Neverland. This got me double pages. I had to read this. So I gave Girls of Paper and Fire four stars but the more I think about it the more it's kind of three stars. I know everyone kind of hated on the ending. That didn't really bother me. I just kind of was a bit bored. Oh, do not drop the MacBook. I feel like I was just mostly kind of not bored. Like I, I don't know. Um, I'm sure you all know about this book, but it's about this girl who ends up having to be like a concubine for the king, but the king is a demon. He's a moon cast. And there's three casts. There's paper cast, seal cast, and moon cast. Paper casts are human, moon casts are demons, steel casts are in between. But like you don't really understand what they look like and I was just kind of underwhelmed. So yeah, I think I'm going to officially right now change it to three stars because when I think about it, four stars is a book that I really enjoyed whereas Girls of Paper and Fire, like, if I had a physical copy, I would probably be unhauling it. Next up, I read Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. I ended up reading this edition rather than my Mina Lima edition. I just felt this would be quicker and I was more in the mood for this. I had so many Peter Pan retellings on my TBR and I just didn't want to like drown myself out with so much Neverland. So I knew this being really short, I wouldn't be as like fed up of Neverland by the end of all my retellings. So yeah, of course it's got five stars. It's a classic. I like, not not just because it's a classic, but you know, it, it's Peter Pan and it's a kid's version, so like you can't really be critical, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm also not gonna give you guys a synopsis because if you don't know the story of Peter Pan, I can't help you. <laughs> Next up was The Panopticon by Jenny Fagan and I give this four stars. I was pleasantly surprised when I opened this up to find out that it's set in Scotland and it's set pretty much in my kind of area and it is written with Scots slang. Um, it's not completely written in Scots or like with, you know, complete Scottish vernacular, but when the characters talk, they use your kindy words. So it was quite good to see that. 
<laughs> I've, gone, I've gone proper Scottish now. But this follows a girl, Anae. Now, okay, this is a problem. Her name is A-N-A-I-S which some people pronounce Anae and some people pronounce it Anais. So I said Anae in my head. She is 15 and she lives in the Panopticon, which is like a young offenders sort of institute kind of place. Um, also like so just basically like a place for young people who are troubled. And we just sort of follow Anae in this place and these characters and it was quite dark. Wasn't what I expected. I expected more of a mystery but Despite that, I still very much enjoyed this, gave it four stars, and would I thought it was middle grade when I first picked this up. Um, no, it's definitely YA. So yeah, I would definitely be interested in seeing what else Jenny Fagan has written, and anything that's set in a place like a boarding school where like the young people stay there, I love. So that's probably what really gripped me with this, but I enjoyed it. And then I read my second non-fiction book of the year. I read one in January and gave it two stars. So I wasn't very pleased with it. But in February, I was like, I'm gonna keep trying to read, you know, non-fiction, try and improve myself and all that stuff. So I picked up Shine by Andy Cope and Gavin Oates. This also got two stars. And the only reason it's two stars instead of one is because there were a few certain select points that were helpful and that's kind of it. Um, oh, I could have ranted about this. I really was going to film a rant review because it just really pissed me off at times. There's points where the guys, like they tr they're not doctors, okay, for a start. These are just two arseholes who don't suffer mental health issues but because they have dealt with depression, as in the emotion, not the illness, they feel qualified to give us tips. And they literally throughout this, at one point they make a comment about a girl, I don't know if she's real or fictional, but they talk about a 22 year old who is a vlogger and she suffers with like a sort of disassociative disorder. And they basically sort of sarcastically say like, oh wow, she spends her life talking to people through a computer and not in person and she's like can't connect with people in real life. How weird is that? And they're trying to make out that because she does social media, that's why she disassociates. It's not a mental health issue and stuff. And it, it just, it ground my gears so bad. There was just certain like things that they said that I just could not agree with and certain things that I understood what they were trying to say but if you're somebody who is really relying on a book like this to help you and you're in a very vulnerable position, you would take things to heart and you would be getting very harmful information. So I just, I couldn't stand by that. The only thing that like, as I say, I only really gave it two stars because there were some things that were helpful, like talking about, like there were certain things like about if you, people who get upset about which way the toilet roll is on the holder, if it goes over or under, and I was always an over person. But as they point out, they're like, why do we spend so much time getting worked up over that when it doesn't mean anything? Now, obviously there are people out there, you know, with conditions such as OCD that it, it does matter and, you know, all that stuff. But in general, like, you know, when you put petrol in your car and you want to put £10 in, but it goes to £10 and a penny, so you'll put £11 in or £15 in to make it even. They're like, why? You just don't do that. And I have tried to do that more often. Like, I've deliberately found myself putting petrol in and putting it over £10. And it's weird. Like, it's... Like, I was never upset. Like, if I aimed for £10 and got £10 and a penny, I wasn't, like, upset. Like, found myself being really stressed. But there is something freeing about just not caring about that stuff but you know this a, apart from those little tidbits this book I think could cause some problems I think it'll be great for people who are neurotypical who don't suffer with mental health problems but it does raise some problems I guess I then went back to my kindle to read Annette Galley arc of The Year After You by Nina DePass I give this four stars. This, I believe it's Nina's debut, but it is set in a boarding school. <laughs> what a shocker. And it's a sort of mystery, but not too mysterious, but the boarding school's kind of weird. It's set in, it's in Switzerland, and there's people from like all over. It's, it's, 
I don't really know how to describe it, but basically our main character, something happened back home and she ends up at this boarding school and it's kind of like trying to figure out what happened, but not really it's more contemporary than mystery it's more her dealing with this thing in her past and coming to terms with it rather than oh mystery we have to solve and find out what happened like no like and the mystery like it wasn't that like shocking it was just like oh okay but again things set in boarding schools and stuff like that just gets me i just love that so even though it wasn't a mystery like i wanted it to be it was still really enjoyable as i said i gave it four stars and I definitely want to read more from this author in the future. I then got through another NetGalley arc. I just read this one on my computer and it was like a really short graphic novel and that is Manfred Saves the Day, um, which is by Caitlin Major. And I gave this four stars and I think it's the second book in like a series, but it's like a comic series, it doesn't really matter. And it's ridiculous. It's about these cats who own men. So basically it's like role reversal. So the cats are the humans and the men are the cats and one of the cats owns a man shelter for like stray men and shit like that but they're about to like they need money to like save it so they enter the men into a man show and it's just so stupid but I loved it it's just so funny it was ridiculous I want to go back and read the first one I really wanted to try and get through a bunch of net galley arcs this month which uh, it kind of happened, I guess. Um, so I read another graphic novel, which was Rennie Stone, Trouble in Amnesia, or some murder in Amnesia, I don't even know, by Julie Bermont. Why did I go American? <laughs> but I gave this two stars. I don't really remember much. I The art style was pretty typical comic style that I just, I don't really like. And it was like, sort of set in the 20s and there was some sort of a murder and there was a woman who's like an author and a lot of misogynistic men who didn't care for the, a woman being an author or whatever I don't even know I just feel like nothing really happened and I was just kind of fed up I believe whilst I was reading Rennie Stone I was also reading this next book so obviously when I read that and it was dreadful I just continued on with this and finished Wait For Me by Caroline Leach I think I talked about this in my haul. I started listening to the audiobook on BookBeat, but the literal like first page, it does chapter one and then it tells you where it's set. And it is set in Aberlady, which is a town in the county that I am from. And I was like, oh my God, that's so close to my like hometown. My hometown is actually mentioned in here at one point. And I was like screaming. I actually spoke to Caroline on Twitter and like told her like where I'm from and she was telling me like her great auntie or something like that or maybe it was just her auntie lived here and stuff so it was just really cool like to know that I probably know like a family or something like I don't know when they moved away and shit but like I will have family that know her family. This is historical fiction it follows a girl called Lorna whose two brothers are away fighting in the war but she lives on the farm with their dad and then they get a German prisoner of war Paul to come and help on the farm and of course at first she's like a German and then of course she's like German. <laughs> you know it is literally like a sort of hate to love but I just thought this was incredible and I just I just really enjoyed this I thought it was great I when I was reading it I could picture myself rereading it in the future just to experience Lorna and Paul and their relationship and stuff again so absolutely adored this and I do have an Ed Galley arc of In Another Time which is Carolyn Leach's second book so I cannot wait to get to that very soon. This was a five star read for me. I adored it and I definitely see myself rereading it in the future. I highly, highly suggest you pick this up, particularly if you enjoy historical fiction, obviously. Back to NetGalley graphic novels. I read Team of the Adventurer, which is by Jonathan Garnier, and I gave this four stars. Now, I'm not gonna lie, struggling to remember what happened in this. I believe this is something to do with the boy who decides he's gonna go off and have his own adventure. And I don't really remember much of what happened, but the art style was just gorgeous. And it was just one of those graphic novels. It was just fun and I enjoyed it while I read it. So I gave it four stars. A bunch of us Neverlanders and possibly other teams, I'm not sure, but a bunch of us for the Butcher Games decided that we would buddy read Nevermoor, The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. I gave this book four stars. It's a middle grade. I'm sure you've all heard of it. I really enjoyed this. 
I didn't get the Harry Potter like vibes and sort of copying that people picked up on. I mean if I'm looking for it I can see the parallels but at the same time like it's a middle grade fantasy you kind of have to follow the same recipe but it was its own book in its own right and I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it. The Cat Finestra I mean she's a, a Magnificat or something like that. She, basically she's a giant fucking cat. I want her in my life. Um, one thing the people from Neverland Buddy I don't even know Buddy Read people <laughs> I really upset them all because this is the UK paperback and you probably won't see it very well on the camera but this little dude right I don't know if you can see but there's his eye patch what eye is that on because to me his eye patch is on his right eye right well in the book it explicitly mentions multiple times he wears an eye patch on his left eye so I'm really fucking pissed off that they have the eye patch on the wrong eye on this cover I even checked other countries and other editions in case like because when it first popped up that it was on his left eye I was like maybe something happens and it switches eyes or whatever no 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 no. every other country has the eye patch on the correct eye but us so that makes me really angry and I can't deal with it um not gonna lie that's probably why I gave it four stars I was probably just really mad at the cover design no I'm kidding I definitely I think I just why did I only give it five if I were <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, I am trying to be really pernickety and only give five stars to books that are like really special. Um, and whilst I did adore this, I just, it doesn't grab me. I don't know. I don't understand my rating system. So don't you try and figure it out because we'll never, we'll never get there. But I definitely enjoyed this. I'm very, very glad to have obviously continued my middle grade reading. And I definitely want book two like now but it's only out of oh, the hardback's gorgeous but this is paperback so I have to wait for the paperback. I then figured it was time I make a start on my Neverland Peter Pan retellings so I picked up Lost Boy by Christina Henry and I gave this three stars. So essentially this is about James Hook. Um, is his surname Hook? No I don't know. No shut up Emma. James Hook is Captain Hook's name. This follows Jamie who was the first ever lost boy that Peter brought to Neverland and they were best friends and they did everything together and we just follow Jamie on the island. We follow him sort of being a protector of the other lost boys and just like following the lost boys and what they do in the day to day and then obviously Jamie disappearing and becoming Captain Hook. It was good right don't get me wrong the atmosphere was great having a sort of just general look into life on Neverland was fun. It was dark but I expected to see some more of when Jamie becomes the villain. I feel like this very much just wanted to give us the backstory and then it cut us off and it's like well you know the rest but obviously this is Peter Pan in the author's way so like what we know from Disney and stuff is very different so I'd have preferred to have seen a little bit more of it I just felt it was very abrupt. We had like this whole section on Jamie being a lost boy and then this was like yeah so now I'm an outcast by and I was like what like where's the rest of it? So it was good but I just kind of felt like I was missing something so I only gave it three stars. I then picked up a manga which was She and Her Cat by Maka Makoto, Makoto Shinkai and the art is by Tsubasa Yamaguchi. I know my Japanese is ridiculous. I was very excited for this. I can't remember when I first heard about this but it was on my radar to buy and I picked this up in Kinokuniya in New York which is like a Japanese bookstore. This let me down. I gave it three stars I believe and I just... This, literally all this is, is about this girl who lives with this cat and just goes about her life. I think, yeah, we're at the cat's perspective. The, we like, the cat is the narrator and here's my problem, right? I gave it three stars because like it was, it was good for what it was, but the cat constantly talked about how beautiful its owner was, constantly, can my battery not die? Constantly, it was just sort of obsessing and fixing on the girl. It just felt very much like a creep looking in on this girl's life and being like, aroused by it. Um, the author is male. 
and often I don't know if I will be able to find a an example um, at least not before my camera dies because you know just a lot of the times the proportions on the body like your thumb just doesn't bend like that and there's one in particular with their feet and like every single toe is in a completely different direction and I'm like have you studied anatomy do you understand how the body works like it was just not so yeah it was interesting it was a fun read but I just felt quite uncomfortable at points I can't believe my camera's gonna die next was another four star read and I can't believe it but I finally got to every heart of Norway by Sean and Maguire I really enjoyed this I cannot wait to continue the series. I love the fact that there's asexual rep. I know some people have said like it's really bad rep. Don't see it as I identify as ace. I like to think I know what I'm talking about. Um, that's kind of this is kind of what stemmed my tweet. If you guys saw it, where I say just because something doesn't represent you doesn't mean it's wrong. Um, but I don't know. I wasn't really analyzing it very hard but I very much enjoyed this and can't believe it's taken me three years to read it. I then listened to Radio Silence by Alice Oseman and I gave it four stars. Um, I loved listening to the podcast like and getting that sort of gender neutral voice however I think I would have enjoyed it more if I had like read it read it. I would have probably given it five stars. <laughs> that is partly my fault because I was listening to it while playing The Sims, so I was a little preoccupied. Then my stepdad bought me three books in charity shop and it was the first three volumes of Princess I by Courtney Love. This was really fucking weird. I gave it three stars. I don't know how to explain this to you, but it's about an alien who becomes a stripper, but she's not a stripper, she just sings and I don't really understand what happened. I am determined to get this done. I read another four star book and that was Tiger Lily by Jodie Lynn Anderson. This is about Peter Pan but like before well it follows Tiger Lily but like Peter Pan but like I don't know I really enjoyed this I know books with Chloe I know she gave it one star she really kind of had problems with it um for me personally some of the things that she had mentioned I remembered one in particular and when I read it it didn't bother me because of the context it was told in uh, I'm not trying to say that she's wrong like she is fully entitled to the opinion that she had on that um, and that's fine but for me I thought it was fine I enjoyed it and I give it four stars so yeah <laughs> I told you I was not gonna be good at giving you descriptions two books left come on next was a five star read and it was volume one or part one of Cheese Sweet Home by Konami Kanata I adored this this was so fucking cute I wanted to cry so many times I adore Chi somewhere in my bed I have a cuddly toy Chi that I got in New York but I ain't getting up to get it because the camera's gonna die and that's why I'm talking at 5,000 miles an hour but this was great I need all the other books thanks bye and my final final read was another five star read and of course it was Summer Bird Blue by Kemi Dawn Bowman I love this author she is incredible I want everything she ever writes she's literally writing a sci-fi it's just been announced hate sci-fi 100% gonna read it 100% hoping I give it five stars as well because it's Akemi I just love her writing um but Akemi is just ugh, incredible the main character Rumi I am pretty sure she identifies as well she doesn't quite identify as asexual but she has like issues we're not understanding her sexuality incredible made me want to buy a ukulele just saying oh also the old man Mr what what Watanabe I forgot his name but there's an old man in this and he's my spirit animal I fucking love him I love the fact this is set in Hawaii and it's written with the character speaking Hawaiian pidgin she like, uses the sort of vernacular they use and it is incredible it's hard to understand at first but I'm like that's their language that's how they talk so hell yeah it should be written that way so yes Akemi is a queen Becca thank you for sending me this I'm in love. So I was literally just saying to the camera, we made it, but the camera might die before I end the video and it, it died. So we're just gonna have a little phone clip for this minute here. But those are the 18 books I read in February. I have no idea how I managed it, but I am so pleased with myself. I am not setting myself a TBR for March. As I said, I have a new job. I am dealing with that. Grandma's just in hospital and she's just got out like on Sunday so you know easing her back into like life I suppose and yeah I will be quite happy if I read just one book this month while I get my life on track 
and hopefully having this job and having like a structure to my weeks will encourage me to film more because right at this point in life I have been very much like it's fine I'll just film tomorrow and then tomorrow I'm like I'll just film tomorrow which is why you never get videos when I say you'll get them but we'll figure it out you guys don't really care you guys are just here for the mess it's great I always say this like Emma shut up no one gives a fuck apart from it apart from it but you I can't speak what a shocker um so yeah Thank you so much for watching. I am so sorry that sped up at the end. I didn't talk about what the books are about, but hey, you got a couple of synopsises and that is something that just like never happens on this channel. So we are glowing up. <laughs> Please let me know if you've read any of these below. Give me recommendations for any, if like you, any other books that you think I might enjoy based on those. I don't know, just tell me whatever the fuck you want. Do what you want, your comment, your choice. And I will see you guys in my next video. I really hope that I have a good thumbnail from the other clip because usually I do it at the end but I don't want a phone thumbnail because the quality is shit so bye <laughs> oh shit ow <laughs>